Hello guys, here we are again. My nickname is Tony and I want with this video to answer some of those who had asked me about this content in English. I've received some emails where some guys was asking about this content in English and I decided to to translate the video so you can understand it better, right? Another point that I want to talk about is that you should not be unpolite with people everywhere. I've received an email where some guy was unpolite with me and I think that's not the right way to, to manage things, right? So don't do that. Be polite with people. So treat other how you want them to treat you. I think you will will be more succeed with that. I'm here just to exchange experience, trying to help you, so be polite with people, right? So without further ado, let's do what we are here to do. Here we have the Google Cloud message page and I do recommend you to read it so you can get more information, more details about everything and how it works, alright? And here we have another location that I want you to take a look. On the left you can see this green balloon, it represents our server. Our server this is responsible to contact the Google Cloud Message Service, represented by this cloud on the middle, to send notifications to our application that is running on our user's device. So our server notify Google Cloud servers and they are responsible to note to identify the best moment, the best situation to deliver that notification to our customer or to our application, right? And when I say the best moment, I mean the device needs to be with charge and to be able to connect to the internet. And as you can see in the documentation, there are some tags that you can use on those notifications so you can specify how long those notifications will be keep will be alive on Google Cloud servers. Let's say that you want uh, some notification to be delivered in three days. So uh, in the next three days it will be alive on the server. After that moment, after that three days, that notification will be deleted by Google Cloud servers. And now we have to configure everything. So this page is self-explanatory. Here we will be creating our application key. That key is used to identify to identify our application and to identify our server. Here at Google Developers Console we can generate our project. So here we type you type your project ID. As you can see we have an project ID. In a moment we will need this one, right? But not right now. And now Google Console is building our application. So let's wait a little bit. Just a moment, please. Alright, so here we can we have uh, something that we can manage, right? So now we need to we need to enable our application to to work with Google Cloud Message. So we search for Google Cloud Message and then we enable it, right? Once it's done, we we go, so let's check that. Right, right, so yeah, so yeah, let's do that. We go to overview. Another point that I want to draw your attention is to the project number. This number will be used in our server. So remember this one. We will need we will need this one later, right? The first time I work at, with Google Cloud Manager, I I forget about this number and it lead me to some troubles. 
So that's it. And now we need to obtain an API key. That API will be used in our server to identify our server. So we go to APIs and then we go to, oh, sorry, we go to APIs, Auto and Credentials. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So we go to Credentials, yeah. And then we create new key. Android key. No, it's wrong. We go to server key. And as you can see, we we should use the same IP. That IP will be used to to test purposes as the documentation says to us. So we need to use the same IP because we are just testing our application. That key will be used to identify our server application. So no matter if you you are using a PHP or a Node server or a Java server, you need that API. So here it is our API key, right? And now we go to, yeah. Yeah, so now we have created our API key and I want to show or to explain you everything that we have done so far. As you can see, we, until now we have created our API key that is used to identify our server that is represented by this balloon on the left. So our server can communicate with our application by sending some notifications, sending some information to the Google Cloud servers that is represented by this cloud in the middle. So this key is used to identify our server and our server by this key can tell to Google Cloud servers to uh, to send some push notifications to our application that is running on our user's device, all right? And yeah, the same way as the server, our application that is run on our user's device, it generates a key. And that key is used to identify our application and our user's device. So when we need to interact with just, uh, with a specific user or a specific device, we need to have that key in hand. So once that key is generated by our application on our user's device, we need to store or to have a way to have access to that key so we can interact just with some, just with uh, a specific user. And uh, to do that, we need when our device that is represented by this device on the right generate that key we need to send that key to our server so our, so our server can store that key in our database so we can interact with that device well and now as you can see we will be using just a project that is provided by Google and you can clone that project if you are not familiar with git I I do recommend you to check it out. Git is a great version control system and here at the Google Cloud Message page we can have access. We have access to some project that Google uh, provides to us and we can download it using Git. So here are the comments to clone the project and that's what that's what we're doing right now. I'll clone it at my desktop, right? So uh, it can be, can exist some, some difference from what is, what you're seeing on the screen and, one, and what you're listening. So, because I'm translating it, right? But anyway, let's go. And uh, here it is, we are cloning at my desktop, right? Okay, it's cloning right now. 
Yeah. Okay, and now I'm showing I'm showing you our server. Our server was built with node node.js. If you don't know it, I recommend you to check it out. It's a great technology. And oh let's see. Oh yeah. And once again I'm showing the same picture. And that server that you saw early in JavaScript is our server. So yeah, right now our clone have finished. And here we need to put some keys and in the right moment I'll show you how and where to put it. Okay? Just a minute, let's let's keep with the video and follow the steps. Uh, on the top you can see some details. This data column, as you can see, we can, yeah, is the key to hold the values that we will send to our to our application. As I, and I, as I said here, I'm, I'm accessing the page node page and I do recommend you to check it out. It's a great technology and it's like uh, no it's it's server build with node with sorry with JavaScript and here we have our post header sorry our post data that is the, the data that we want to send to our application and here we have the post with the data that we want to send to our application. All right. And here I'm, I'll show you how to build. Oh, sorry. What? What could go require us to do that? To interact with our application. And as you can see, we need to send a post to that URL. We have some header. And authorization, as you can see, your authorization that is that key, all right, that key we generated before earlier. And sorry, all right, so oh, yeah, for example, as you can see, we can look at. This registration IDs represent the IDs generated by our application that is run on our user's device. We don't have it yet. We don't have. In a moment, we will have it. All right. So, as you can see here, we have our URL in which we you in which which we will use to send our notification. So we'll send as application JSON. All right. So I'll copy that key. And as Google explains us, I use key equals the key of our server. All right. So our server is almost ready to receive not to send notifications. And here is a message with a plate a payload with six recipients. All right, yeah. All right, okay, okay. This video is is it took uh, more time because it has a lot of details and explains. A lot of things, all right. 
so you can use that data to put uh, all the information that you want to send to your device, to your user's device. And okay, right now we are we'll build our mobile application that will be that is in charge of receiving our push notifications. Okay, so next, now we'll choose our minimal SDK. Okay, so let's choose the video I've chosen four dot. Four dot four dot four dot three. All right. Let's go. Let's create. It was built with a blank activity. I renamed it. I have renamed it so you can use whatever you want. And now I think we will we will we'll copy some of the some of the classes that exists in Google Cloud the the project that we have that we cloned with using git and as you can see uh, that's our application okay oh and now we are copying well, we are copying some classes from the Google project and we'll modify it just to do what we, we want to. No, I'm, I'm looking for the class that I need. I'll past it. No, not yet. Oh, yeah. I'll pass the class. And now we're we're deleting my main activity because we'll use demo activity that comes with Google Cloud Source that comes with Google Cloud Project Sample Project. All right. Okay. So let's move on. Is there a main pest? Okay. And remember, I'm just translating the original video that was recorded in Portuguese. All right, so that's why you can see some difference differences between the this video among this video and what I'm talking. All right. And uh, I think we're here. Now we'll, we'll copy the code to use Google APIs. All right, that's it. Google APIs. I'll build. So Google Play Services. At this time, I was was I use it 6.1 version I think they they have updated it's downloading okay all right and now some errors has gone it has access to Google Cloud messaging, so we can we 
can start building our application. But we still have some warnings and errors that we need to fix. And as I think we'll copy that I will copy the main XML. Alright. Copy it. I'll pass it on the project. So I encourage you to if you are just starting with Google Cloud Message to use this this approach is clear than using or trying to understand the whole project that comes with Google Cloud Messaging sample project and in the in the comments of this video I'll, I'll provide you the search code so you can start from start off from a, where I left okay there are still some warnings but don't care about that right now doesn't matter sorry about the dog okay we are I'm just checking some strings Just checking some string, it's inner problem that doesn't, that doesn't matter. All right, To the source code and to to have a better understand comprehension of the of the whole thing. All right. And here we'll have access to the device ID that will be generated by Google Cloud Messaging class. It will generate a key and that key is used to identify uh, our user's device. Now I'm just organizing some parts of the code because I don't like when it it's that way, that way, all right. So here we have access to Google Cloud Messaging and we get the ID. And at some point here we'll have, we'll print that ID to the console. Once again, sorry about that dog. Here is the point where we should put that ID that I, I've commented before that use it to identify our project. So that's project number. And here is the place that we should put that ID. Okay. And uh, once we execute that application we'll have access to the to the ID 
use it to identify our application or sorry to identify our app so in this version of the code it is stored at uh, locale it's stored locally on the device and we can have access to it this method is used to register that ID with our server so if you need to uh, store that ID here's the point that you need to send it back to your server so your server have access to to the IDs in the users or something else if you if your app needs okay just a minute sorry about about that delay well here we have some configurations that we need to use and in the Google project as you can see if you download it you can see the permissions that we need to use to have access to Google Cloud Messaging and to store some information on the application database as uh, and to we need to have access to the internet all right so I I've copied that information from the Google project and passed it here And now, what's what's next? What comes next? I'm accessing the page that has yeah the permission that we need and the details about the package name from our application another point that it's so imp very important is this if you write your package name differently it will not work so you need to use the same package name Another permissions that we need to use that we need to our application runs properly okay I'll change the package name once again I'll change I'll change the package name More, more details that we am searching for, more details that we need to copy to configure our application. All right, let's go. Mm. 
maybe I'm grabbing some data or some information from other sources to pass here. All right, and we need the entire block. Yeah, I pasted the entire block here. The name, the package name. I'll copy the package name, so it will be okay. Sorry about that dog once again. The dog doesn't stop barking. And now I'll copy a image resource, a image just to use as the icon of our notification. So we have an icon, an icon in our notification when it arrives or when it pops on our user screen on, on our user's device screen and it's almost everything is almost okay it's almost done we are almost done I'll configure now the emulator to run our application. Yeah, here I'm writing the activity name from my application This method you will be is in charge to receive our notification and here and here is the location that we need that we are responsible for handling that push notification that will come. So as you can see we just have a for loop a loop for that is iterating through 0 to 5 and uh, is leaping the thread about 5 seconds in each iteration so it doesn't do it doesn't do something important or interesting here so whatever you want to do your you for your notification you need to do here and as i said earlier uh, our server will once our application our mobile application starts running on our user's device it will generate an key and that key we need to send to our server and as I I I have I didn't program program that before I didn't 
build that method that sends that information to our server our application is not able to do that so we will copy the code on the console and pass it on the server so the server can interact with our application by push notifications I start our application right now on the emulator on the emulator and uh, right now we are on the boot mode and we can check all the process while it's running so we have access to the Google Cloud messaging right now we're checking that and now we will generate this registration process is provided is provided by Google APIs and the app is not checking if the ID is stored locally and now we have oh yeah now it it will generate the ID that represents our device so it will interact with Google and generate that ID and voila here it is that's our ID I think in a moment I'll copy it from the console or from the variable oh no we got an error no we got an error What's wrong? Sorry about that. Oh, let's check. We have an error. From restriction error. From registration error. Yeah, let's check that. Let's check what's happening. Sorry about that. Just a minute. I'll check it. Phone registration error. We wasn't able to register our phone with. Okay, let's check what is happening right now. Checking the ID. And now let's go. Main fast, yeah. Checking the package name. What else? App name. We're pointing to all our activity. It's okay. Okay. All right. I'll check if. Everything is okay. I'm checking right now if everything is okay. And I'll look if I'll search for if there is something that it's not properly configured. All right. Google Cloud message for Android is okay. Credentials. They are okay, the IP okay, everything's fine. This key is used on our server and not in our device on our device. I check the project number once again. It's okay, it's okay. It's right. And uh, I think that's I'll try again once again but if I don't if I'm right as I can remember this is because the version of the emulator uh, Android 4 dot the 4 uh, the Android for Android version number four doesn't uh, 
on the emulator that it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So if I'm not wrong, I think I will create another emulator with an, a different version. Yeah, let's check. In a moment, I'll, in a moment I'll discover what's wrong with it. I'm checking the log right now if there is something that is not right. We'll start the same later again with in the book mode. Oh yeah, right now we have the ID and that's the ID that identifies that identify our device and our application that is running. I'll copy it right now and paste to the registration IDs. And this process is seems like we was our server was able to store that ID. The device was running our application ID, and the device send that ID once it generates that ID. The device send is back to the server, so the server can interact with that device. When, when the moment comes. Okay, so, so uh, right now our application and our emulator, it's ready to, to receive connection, to receive push notifications from our server, all right? So, okay, I'll just Put our application on back in background, on background, in background. Sorry, it's connected to the internet. That's my website. And I I don't have any idea why. Access it. I have accessed that site. So now I will run our server and send send a push notification to our mobile. I'll run our server. All right. Node server .js and voila, our notification came is now we're executing in the book mode the code that is responsible for handling our notification so on our device no filter I'll show the log and our Notification, our thread has counted one to five, and in a moment our notification will appear on the screen. Oh, here it is. That's it. Our notification with the information that we put in the data from in the data on our server when we was. So here it is. 
I've written my nice key in Portuguese. Age, as you can see, 29 is another parameter in our data. So I'll execute our application again. Now, is a simple application execution. We're not in the move mode and we are on clear the console and just execute our server again. And as you can see, I'll clear, oh sorry, I was in the move mode. And let it go. Let it go. It's running right now. And I'll clear that notification. So it's counting. One, two, three, and now four. Four. Just just a second. Five seconds. And our notification should appear. Yeah, right now. That's it, guys. Well, I hope with this video I could help you. Uh, sorry about my English. I'm improving it day by day. And if you have any questions or something, please send me. I'll be pleasure to answer and to exchange experience with you. And another point is, if you saw some of the other videos and you want yet in English please contact me I'll be pleasure to send it to you okay so thank you see you soon bye bye